welcome to episode three of the five C's of survivability. The five things you'll need, most importantly, to survive out in the wilderness. I'm not in the wilderness today because I'm in my cabin area, Tanglewood Condominium 55 and Over Park. Cindy did a tight sheet video this morning. Pause that if you like. Buy that right here on our YouTube channel. Another episode I'm going to do, you'll see it in different places. The way to em estimate the wind speed by the flag. The gust, it, when it's standing right out there, that's 15 to 20s. And then when you hear the gust, 20 for sure. And then as it drops down, you can uh, estimate the wind. That's for another episode. But here's our little compound. If you look down over there, between these homes, you'll see a fence. Not a huge fence, just enough to keep the honest people out. But enough to keep some, some critters out, although we've seen deer in the backyard here. And we're, we're 30 miles from Tampa in the Newport Ritchie, Holiday, Florida area. As you see these homes, there's 350 homes. In the distance is our clubhouse, a pool, great social area, a few places always for sale, some green space between each home, and here is our little backyard paradise where we can camp out. And we have had to shelter here in place with the power out for about a week when Irma came through a couple years back. But here we are, where we got our hammock pole. The HOA is gonna have something to say about that probably. Our hammock hangs. Over to the uh, corner of the house, you can see a, an eye there that's rated it. It's bolted right into the corner of the house. Rated it 350 pounds or something. Each of those on the top of the pole. Rated enough so that we can camp out back here. Our view of that full moon, that pink moon, moon last week came right up over these palms and across the front. But welcome to another episode, episode three. The uh, five C's of sustainability. You'll remember the first item I consider to be of importance, containers. There's two right there. My 55 liter pack, think through hiking. Lots of miles, everything on your back you need. And then think day pack or 72 hour pack. And that's the one we're talking about. Stay with me as I make my case that cutting tools are the third C. So briefly to review, I maintain that containers are the most important item in a, a kit. A 72 day, 72 hour get out of the, the house, go into the woods for a scout or an overnight or even a, a day trip, which we're planning and coming up here pretty soon. A day trip, which is down the street. Well, three miles down, three miles back. There's a wooded area along the river. We want to get there. We want to get there. And if we were to have to get there and be stranded overnight, how could we survive? I maintain containers are important because of the need for water. You got to have water to survive, go without food for a long time, but this Sawyer Squeeze is uh, the backpack, the big backpack, through hikers, meat, survivalists, or bushcrafters. We'll leave it at bushcrafters. I found this steel can, canister, which uh, more approximates what uh, we're talking about for, for survivability. It could nest inside of this cook cup, which also serves as a pot. We kind of like this Stanley one, nested in here, all our, our things that we need. Another stove, cotton cloth, heat. Uh, that's the alcohol for the alcohol stove. And a windscreen 
unfold that. Set it up like this against the prevailing wind and the stove set up thusly. So I made the case for containers first. Containers, you gotta be able to process water, make it safe, and then you need to be able to um, store that water in a container, one that can go in the fire. This one I got for three bucks at the dollar store. Although there's a big caution right on there, do not put hot liquid inside this bottle. And sure enough, as you look down inside, there's a couple seams. This would not be not be ideal, but it's, it's what we were getting at to, to think about nesting and, and some things to, to take a look at. Then the next day, yesterday in episode two, I talked about fire. Here's a alcohol stove, a fancy feast made out of the fancy feast cat food can, tomato paste can, cut the tomato case pan off and line that with the felt. The felt absorbs the alcohol comes up through there and then this burns a nice ring of flame. Matter of fact, the next one I want to make is a tuna fish can lined with this this material. It's that uh, welder's screen. You hang it behind the, the copper tubes that you're going to be welding on, soldering on, using solder on them so that when you're using that benzomatic, burnzomatic torch, uh, this is back there against the wall at I don't know, thousand degrees or something it can can it can withstand but that's the wicking material it feels a little bit like like cotton it's you just cut off pieces so I'll be trying that experiment with the tuna can I just use this little scrap piece to check my size and sure enough I got just enough so I'm wondering I'm wondering I'm going to test that to see exactly how much the nice thing about this is my cook kit I think it's going to be a more supportive of the pot. And this has to be cut down. The can will be cut down. And then this. Because this one, it gets a little precarious sometimes. Seated on that little stove. And I'm not sure if that'll be that better or not. We're going to experiment. So that gets us up to speed on containers, then fire, heat, lighter, save those, uh, and then today, cutting, the ability to cut. So let's cut to the chase. <laughs> See what I did there. Got a couple things here. First of all, knives. Here's the first knife, with me all the time. It's a little Gerber. See, it's got the clip for my pocket, but I, I choose to keep it on the, it's a lock back on this, on this cord of paracord. It is right there, I can't lose it, a little daisy chain, so there's probably four feet of, of paracord there that could be cannibalized for other projects. It goes on my, my belt with A knot, name the knot. Go to the corporal's corner. The rabbit comes out of the hole around the tree. Back down the hole. Won't slip and it'll come out. So there, there's one knife on, on my person. Here's another way, one I found since yesterday, a cheapo lockback knife. The only problem with it is it, it's built as stainless. Not sure if there's enough carbon available as you undo this uh, lockback to um, to strike a, a ferro stick, but we'll see when I get that back. But ba at least it's not treated like this one's treated. We'll see um, if I can't get that one figured out. Another lockback, safe. What I want to feature today is this saw you saw it in the still pictures that i put up front of this video this saw is an antique 
like me, it is at least probably 50 years old for sure, because I don't think I was 16 years old when I got this. I think I've been more like 14. So it's probably 56 years old, 58 years old. It's a pretty standard fold-up knife. I had it undone earlier. I'm gonna be brave on video and unfold it up again. Look at that. It's cut many, many things. It goes down into the blade nicely. I only had to put a little bit, there's a little manufactured spud on the inside of that plastic to bring it around and lock it down. I love this thing. It's beat up, it's old, it's gnarly, but it's uh, bomb proof. And just to illustrate that it, the, the fact that it's, darn it, it's, it's 50 years old. And it does assemble pretty well. And for processing a lot of wood around a site, why not? Around it goes. Tighten that up and you're good to go. Name that Bushcrafter. Now, Corporal's Corner, Dave Canterbury, Black Hat Bushcraft, and their student, Endurance Room. Check those guys out. They make one of these out of a, a wood product in the forest. They get the blade and nothing else. They use their cordage. There's my, uh, my ridge line, but it's made out of paracord. You can see my uh, loops for, for prussic knots on there. But I love, I love this. I love this saw. It's processed lots of wood over the years on many, many backpacking trips, and I love it. But that won't go on this trip day long, but this one will. Showed it a little bit yesterday. This also is, well, to, to designate a car an antique, the way I understand it, it needs to be 30 years old to get that blue Florida license tag that says antique. Picture blue Florida license tag right here, because this thing's 30 years old. Gerber made it. I'm sure I got it. At, was Walmart around 30 years ago? Not. I got it then at, at Big N, or, or what they called uh, Kmart. Not Kmart before that. 30 years old. Still works. I processed a lot of wood with this. It'll cut anything up to 5 inches. And it cuts really well. That's really sharp. So I would think cutting tools are the third of the five C's in my mind. Containers are important. Here's a container that my, my wife was going to give up. It's a tin box. And this paint will burn right off the first time. And I think there's enough air pocket in the air hole in the release. I'm not gonna punch the hole in the top. I might. I'll try it first without it, but this will become a great tinder kit put some of that charred cotton cloth inside of there. And then I've got these tools to process some wood. And uh, we'll see more about it. But there's my case for the, the third C, which I would believe to be cutting tools. I'm gonna just say cutlery from now on. So my cutlery so far includes these that I've shown. And the one that I really wanna put into my kit is going to be an Ontario knife. You've seen some of them around. The reason Ontario knife is important to me is because Cindy and I lived in that town where the Ontario knife factory was. It's an American-based company, American-made. Uh, we know some of the people that have worked for Ontario knife over the years, and we want to support a, a local, or a made in America kind of knife. And they do have a four to five inch knife, full tang, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, right angle on, on the backbone of the, the knife for processing, for striking on the ferro stick. So I'll be looking to get into an Ontario knife. 
So thanks for joining me today for my my third installment, my third episode of the five C's. Containers, or the first C, mainly to hold water. And you know what? I thought about this pack. You line, and there's a nitro flume bag in there, which is waterproof, or I'll put a garbage bag through there. You can carry 55 liters, 55 liters of water if you wanted to haul some back to, to a camp. Here's the uh, ever-present hand sanitizer that sits right on the shoulder strap of the pack. Uh, through hikers, always sanitizing, keeping their hands. They want to avoid the norovirus. So this, this COVID-19 is nothing new. I mean, it's new, but the situation is nothing new. Stay sanitized. Got my, hand, my stakes. I used a little screwdriver for a toggle to hang the, uh, the day pack. Got the toggle up there for that. But here's the pack for a day-long trip, 72 hours, a little sit pad, hunkered in behind the, the built-in pad of, of the bag. Secondly, it was containers. Gotta have water. Uh, it's 88 degrees today and muggy today, so there's uh, Smart Water, my Sawyer. They fail. Um, they fail. Cook pots won't. I'd love to hear your comments on uh, the best, the best steel canteen. Um, this this one's not going to work. It'll nest in there or nest in here for my container. Uh, my second C I would believe to be fire, fire and water. Fire and water are the most important things. I think uh, whoever made famous the same fire and water got them in reverse order. Water and fire, very important. So thanks for joining me for this third episode. Tomorrow's Thursday, we'll do episode four. Now, I'll, I'm going to put cordage in there. Name the last seed. Da, 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 It's covered. Or clothing, actually. So, yeah, some would argue that's the most important thing. And maybe when we do the, the, when I talk about cover, we'll talk about the importance of, you know, what to dress in. Cotton versus wool, wool blends, tech fabric for runners. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff to talk about. So uh, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Please subscribe to the channel. We would love to have you join us. Check out Cindy's Tai Chi for this morning. A little gentle exercise. A little flag standing right out. Then they'll luff. So it's gusting to probably 25 miles an hour. And you see in the distance there, I need to pull this in. Our little compound, that fence, God bless him, Don Dash. He, he's since passed away, but he made sure that fence goes all the way around the 350 units of our homeowners association property. The thing was, there's a bylaw, you can't put fences on the property. So he had to go contact every single resident all the way around the park to get their permission to put that fence on their property he had to sell the thought that hey it's good for all of us and rest his soul he uh, took care of that made sure that 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 happened so that we have a relatively relatively secure area the first year we moved here 15 years ago right about where I stand a, t a deer came by two deer Cindy was up early in the morning looked out that back window of our our unit and there were two deer right right here so you know the, the wildlife can get through so in a, in a future video talk about sustainability here and how we can survive inside this little compound for a fairly long time I look forward to telling you about that but for today Thanks for joining me on this third episode of Containers Combustion. Here's my uh, tin that's gonna be, I'll be using to make um, char cloth and keep my kit in there, smaller ferro, ferro rod. And today, cutlery. Thanks for letting me uh, wax on about this, uh, this Boy Scout saw. You got that when I was probably 14 years old. 
It's 52 years ago. That is an antique. Scary, I guess I'm an antique too. Take care, subscribe please, so we can get this uh, channel live for our, our worshiping com community, Cindy and I pastor at church in Brooksville. And because of the COVID, we haven't been able to go be with them. So we hope we've been with them electronically, live on Facebook Live, but we'd love to be able to take, take YouTube to that level. Thanks for your support. Thanks for hanging in there, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.